The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. Today on Mr. Media, Today on Mr. I'll yeah. talk to Lucy Chaffee, a.k.a. Little Lapan, a rising pop singer-songwriter from the U.K. We'll talk about her music, okay. and she'll also play two songs, play two Go songs. Stop Go and Sound of Stop Summer. Go. Stick around. If the interview doesn't go well, I figure we can always make well. a stew. So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, brought to you today by Amazon.com. When you visit MrMedia.com and click on any of the links to purchase books, music, movies, gift certificates, or anything else through our Amazon link, you support this free video podcast. Whenever you need something else from Amazon, please consider returning to MrMedia.com to order it. It doesn't cost you any extra, and we sure appreciate the support. And don't forget, MrMedia.com has more than 1,200 celebrity audio and video interviews archived on the site. That's hundreds upon hundreds of hours free entertainment. Subscribe for free on MrMedia.com and you'll instantly get an email every time a new interview is posted. You can also watch and subscribe to the show on YouTube, Vimeo, Daily Motion, The Realm Network, and Frequency.com. And if you prefer to just listen, Mr. Media is also available for free on iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Blueberry, TuneIn, Blog Talk Radio, Podfeed.net, and Player FM. You can subscribe to any of those services and never miss another episode. Finally, you can interact with Mr. Media Interviews on all kinds of social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and more. Friend or follow us, we'll friend or follow you back. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of UK tastemakers who think the Yanks who watch and listen to this show are in for a rare bit treat in the new new media capital of the world, the St. Petersburg, world. Florida. I often wondered why the world didn't see more women who wrote music and sang like Chrissy Hine, leader of the Pretenders. You know her music, Middle of the Road, I'll Stand By You, Dress and Pocket, My City Was Gone, Stop Your Sobbing. Hers was a distinctive sound. Both lyrically and musically, you can always tell a Chrissy Hines song apart from all others. Well, a lot of people find that the UK's Lucy Chaffee, performing as Little Le Pan, reminds them a lot of Hind. And after Hind. hearing a few of her originals, few of originals, it was pretty easy to understand pretty why. Easy. Lucy's 2014 EP, Little Le Pan, is available domestically in the US and the rest of the world, and following completion of a tour that took her from New Zealand to New York, she's in the process of writing and recording music for her next EP. For the next half hour, we're going to talk about music, Long Shadows, and Lucy will play two of her songs, Ghost Up Go Song. and Sounds of Summer. Stop. Sounds of Summer. Lucy Chaffee, welcome to Mr. Chaffee. Media. welcome. Hi, Bob. Thanks for having me. Delighted to see you. Delighted to connect. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, Lucy, it's kind of a mixed bag it's to mixed hear, bag yourself, written to about hear yourself written about and introduced about in places as being places sort of like being Chrissy Hind. Like I mean, there's no pressure in that, right? <laughs> Not at all, no. Um, she's still going strong, isn't she? So, um, you know, I'd like to think that I'd still be uh, rocking out when I'm in my, I think, is she in the 50s or 60s now? Um I think she might be in her 60s. Yeah, 60s. Yeah, yeah. So um, that'd be pretty, pretty happy to be going on then still. <laughs> and you're a teenager now, right? Teenager. Oh, your flattery gets you everywhere, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not in this by accident. So, who? I mean, who did you think you were similar to when you started singing? You decided that this was something you wanted to pursue. Um, it's really funny because that question. Um, I get asked that quite a lot, and I always just have to say I actually never wanted to sound like anyone else apart from me. <laughs> so I'd like to say I'm an individual, um, you know, unique-sounding uh, singer-songwriter, because um, comparisons can be the death of joy. So, uh, yeah. 
it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. And I would avoid it myself, except, you know, we're, and I understand, you sort of understand how this happens in uh, the music business and in movies and TV. When, when you're introducing someone or a concept that people don't know, you're always trying to say, well, it's sort of like this and it's sort of like that. Yeah. So and, until yeah. you really break out, uh, so. people will keep doing that, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing the amount of um, comparisons you actually do get um, after a gig as well. And then you're like, really? Do I sound like, I don't know, Natalie Merchant? And I've had, um, you know, Laura Marling and Regina Spector. And, and you just go, really? And I think sometimes people in the audience like to associate you with one of their singers that they like you know and they kind of go oh well I like Natalie Merchant so um you know maybe this reminds me a little bit of her so yeah <laughs> that must be must be it. <laughs> it it's good if you remind them of someone that they like like yes exactly <laughs> yeah well so what what artists what? have influenced you I mean whose artists. music do you like let's put it that way um, I like a lot of um, singer-songwriters, um, obviously um, infamous Bob Dylan, um, and also I've um, been listening to quite a bit of um, Neil Young and um, Rodriguez as well, and just like, I'm very eclectic with my taste actually, um, and I like to look out for a lot of new music that is undiscovered or, you know, I kind of go onto YouTube and, um, have a look at acoustic singer songwriters and, uh, recently Ben Howard has been getting a bit of, um, action on YouTube. Um, I, I like watching Jules Holland, um, because he, he features a lot of, um, up and coming artists, you know? And uh, found out about a few artists that way from looking at his his channel, um, Sia as well. She's a lovely, lovely singer from Australia. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so just you know, just being aware really of what's out there and looking on YouTube. And it's great that we have that facility now to do that because we're not just dictated to by you know radio stations because <laughs> a lot of radio this day. You know, you know, an age is rubbish, so I don't really tend to listen to the radio much of these days. <laughs> you have to sort of wonder what the Beatles or Bob Dylan would have been like if they had had access to as much world music and, and d diversity as, as we have now. Would, would they have sounded the same? Would they have been different? Yeah, that's really interesting. I suppose they traveled a lot, didn't they? So, you know, on their touring and they picked up a lot of styles possibly from all their travels, you know, all the countries that they visited. Because I find when I've been to different countries, your style is infused with that culture and somehow and the sound. <laughs> so I'm sure that is a good way of, you know, like expanding on your sound and repertoire. Um. I noticed that you had spent sev several years in New Zealand. Was that uh, personal, professional? I, I don't know how old you were when that happened. Uh, at first, it was like a personal um, ambition to travel uh, solo by myself um, in my late 20s. And I it, originally, it wasn't for music. It was for personal discovery. <laughs> and character building um and then it was in New Zealand that I actually um started to teach myself guitar and write songs for the stage so I did an open mic night and um in Raglan New Zealand which is a surf town and um just found a, a really lovely little pocket of people really good community that were very supportive of my music and I got a band together whilst I was there and um, that went really well, like the gigs were really busy. And it was a really good kind of training ground. Yeah, so I was very lucky 
to, to be based there for a while and have the support of the community. And we say that you're in the UK, but where are you? Where actually in the UK are you? Uh, have you heard of Devon? Yeah. Yeah. Devon. Yeah. Down in Devon. <laughs> it's the West Country. West right. Country land. Right. Right. Actually born in Plymouth. Yeah. Um, who are, it's like a farmer down, down here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure you can see, see the straw coming out of my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'm currently living in a caravan with my husband in Devon. Very nice. Very nice. And that's nice. literally where you're coming to us from today. Yeah my home very nice. nice um when when did your talent for music first show itself was it there in new zealand when you started doing open mics or were you already you know were you you learned to play guitar you said in new zealand but were you already singing at that time or uh yeah very privately though <laughs> <laughs> um i've always really um really loved playing music i I played flute in primary school, which would be, you know, I would have been around nine, eight or nine years old and um, started like developing melodies and playing by ear on the flute. And my mum recognised that I was able to do that and, and she, um, bless her, she worked a second job to um, get me some piano lessons whilst I was at high school. And so I got to grade five, a uh, grade four in piano, but I couldn't go any further because uh, myself and my piano teacher had this understanding that I would only play my own compositions. <laughs> so she she used to get quite annoyed with me because she'd want me to go further. But I was like, I'm not interested in playing and reciting. I just want to compose. So I couldn't go any further with my exams. But I just kept playing and, and secretly singing away in my bedroom and lock myself away and write, you know, little teenage love songs. <laughs> and um, it wasn't really until I went uh, traveling. I started off in Australia for a year and then landed in New Zealand. And um, it wasn't really until I got to New Zealand that I started doing the two together with songwriting and singing and playing guitar at the same time. So it's been, um, it, I had a bit of a, a, a bit of a dry spell where I wasn't doing any music for about seven years. So, um, I think all this last five years of music has been the accumulation of all that, you know, mm -hmm. tension that's been built up in those seven years that I wasn't playing. <laughs> well, um, T tell me about that first open mic night. Were you more excited than nervous or more nervous than excited? And how did it go? Um, it's funny because I wish my friend Tess was here to talk to you about that moment um, because she had to get me out of the toilet. Um, my, my name was called and I couldn't. I just locked myself away in the cubicle. And Tess was like, Lucy, you've got to go out now and sing. <laughs> and I was like, I can't, I can't. Um, and, yeah, I still remember just taking a long time to leave that cubicle. And then as soon as you get on stage, it's fine. Like I was in my element. But just the actual anticipation of going on stage, it's that adrenaline that you get before performing. Mm -hmm. um, it's like this big rush, you know, and it's – sometimes hard to control that excitement understand understand yeah. well let's uh let's show people uh what we're talking about here um the first song mm -hmm. you're going to play is uh go stop go i think is that right yes and uh, yeah. do you want to do you want to set that up at all do you want to tell any do you want to tell folks a little about the song yeah um it's a song i wrote whilst i was in raglan new zealand and um it was written about um, just over a year ago, and it's about leaving a small town. It's about leaving your comfort and feeling that push and pull. And um, I, I left Regan to go to Auckland, which is, um, you know, the busiest um, city in terms of, like, music and things. So 
I left a, a lovely small surfing town to go to the big city, which I was finding very difficult to do. And um, so it's, it's called Go Stop Go because of that push and pull that you feel when you need to make a change. All right. Well, uh, All right. folks, this is uh, Lucy Chaffee uh, performing as yeah. Little Upon, and this is Go Stop Go. I've already got my shoes on, but there's nothing here to choose from. It's already night. Nothing's happened. It's already midnight. And nothing's happening in this town for me. Let's go. Stop, go. Let's go. Stop, go. Let's go. Stop, go. Let's go. Stop, go. I know you've stopped believing, because you know that I am leaving this old town. It's going older every day. This old town, I'm tired and I've outgrown it in every way. For me, let's go. Stop, go. Let's go. Stop, go. Let's go. Stop, go. Let's go. Stop, go. When people get you down and I'm not around, will you paint a pretty picture? Will you paint a pretty picture for me? Let's go, stop, go. Let's go, stop, go. Let's go, stop, go. Let's go, stop, go. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. All right. Thank you. Very nice. Hi. Very nice. So tell me about a song like that. Now, did you did you come up with the the hook for that first? Did you did you did a a bit of lyrics strike you? How did that song come together? How did that song come together? Um, yeah, I started with the guitar and um, just with the riff actually, and um, and then put the melody to the guitar chords and had the um, lyrics. It's funny because it's like when you pick up your guitar, you come up with some chords and the pattern, uh, it already has a feel, like I had a, I had a mood that I want to convey, and it was how I was feeling, usually it's how I'm feeling at the time I write the song, so at that time I was trying to leave a town that I was familiar with, and so it, it's like the song almost writes itself, you know, that's how I was feeling, so that's what I'm going to talk about, with this, um, with the chords and the guitar, I'm gonna put a melody to it, and it all kind of falls into place. <laughs> now, I, I want to say something. I know, I know that your husband is there off camera, and I hope he won't be offended. But you have a lovely singing voice, and I, I, I you know, I, I wondered since you started singing late in life. Uh, it's not in life, but you know, I mean, you didn't you didn't start singing at nine or ten. Uh, did you have training? Did you just start singing? Um, no, I I actually was very shy. Um, at like during school, 
um, it was actually the comment of a teacher at school. I didn't take music funny enough at school um, because I was put off by the teacher. Um, he just wasn't very good. <laughs> and uh, just, you know, like how you just kind of aren't really that into some teachers. And um, I went for an audition and um, started singing um, Stand By Me, Benny King. And, like, I literally, he didn't give me any chance. I had about three seconds. And he was like, no. I was like, okay. <laughs> so it kind of like, and then there was another time, the same teacher, and I auditioned for, like, a pop concert. And I um, I played the piano. Um, um, I can't remember which piece it was now, but I remember playing the piano, and I started singing, and he started, like, laughing and it was just very off-putting for me as a teenager at school and it put me off for a long time singing in public so I'd only like sing to myself really and I think occasionally my mum would hear me but not not very much <laughs> so and I, I've so never had any training I, I went for one singing lesson when I was 20 and that didn't go very well because I just felt that the teacher was just interested in, in singing. She was like singing herself and wasn't really listening to what I wanted to do. So I, I'm not kind of of this school where I learn. It's more of a expression, you know. As it sounds like all the uh, adults you met at, at a certain point in your life were out of the movie Oliver. <laughs> 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 it's not been easy. <laughs> well, all right, so the other part, you're, you're billed as a singer-songwriter. So tell me about the songwriting part. When did you realize that you had that, that ability as well, as opposed to, you know, writing, I mean, uh, using other people's songs to build your career? Um, well, I, I suppose um, I've always enjoyed writing poems because essentially that's what a song is, isn't it? It's a poem which is sang, and um, sung or sang, I don't know. <laughs> um, and so I've always written poems, and like I remember winning like a poetry um, competition at school, and you know, I loved creative writing, like that was something that I really enjoyed, um, English, you know, English literature and creative writing. So, you know, I knew that I enjoyed writing, um, but in terms of song, I suppose it was when um, I picked, when I started playing guitar, that's when I think my songwriting really came into its own, you know, because it's another tool. I think when you're writing poems, which um, I used to do before playing guitar, um, you can hear melodies in your head and you can sing them but it's it's very hard to convey a song a cappella. Mm. You know, it's like I, I find the guitar very very useful because it's accompanying the melody and and um you know, whilst there are songs that are sung a cappella, I, I prefer to have a backing of an instrument and strings to convey your message and, and story. And then, of course, I have to ask you, what comes first, the music or the lyrics? A bit of both, actually, for me. Sorry, I'm not one or the other. It's um, really, it depends how I'm feeling. But lately, it's been more music, and then the lyrics are dictated by the music. But I've done both. I've done both. Right. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's give folks another example of your work. Um, the second song you're going to play is uh, "Sounds of Summer." Uh, is there a story behind that? I mean, it's a it's a it's, it's a it's a title that immediately puts something into the the person's mind as to what they might be hearing. Mm. Yeah. Well, you'd initially think, you know, quite kind of positive lyrics. You know, "Sound of Summer." Oh, it's the best time of year for a lot of people. Um, it was actually I went through a little bit of a a sad spell and I found it very difficult to motivate myself um, to do anything for a few days where I had a bit of trouble um, at, um, at work when I was um, working in 
in Hamilton, New Zealand, and I wasn't happy in my situation, and I just found it very difficult to uh, emphasize with the fact that it was summer outside, but I didn't feel like summer inside. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, give a listen. Uh, this is uh, Lucy Chaffee again, uh, Little Lapan, and playing some. Am I allowed to swear? Uh, Lucy Chaffee and playing song. So. <laughs> I give you a laugh, not a frown. I'll be careful not to bring you down. There's no time for being sad when you're not in a one man band. Looking down from my bed, it's hard to see that summer lies ahead. It's hard to hear. It's hard to hear The sound of summer inside these four walls So horizontal as this bedroom door Blacks coming down, they can hear the sound They can smell the sun to lotion But I can't stand the smell of that I can't stand the smell of this. Tiny creatures with no features, but they know how to make a noise, sucking blood. Sucking life, busy buzzing around that fucking life. Disappear or die. Do you want an animal like that fly? It's hard to hear. It's hard to hear. The sound of summer outside these four walls. So horizontal is this bedroom door. Blacks coming down, they can hear the sound. They can smell the sun to lotion, but I can't stand the smell of that. I can't stand the smell of that. I'm tired and hot, perspiring. I'm dark, I'm hot from work. I'm hot, I'm hot. The sound of the sun inside these four walls. So horizontal is this bedroom door. Flags coming down, they can hear the sound. They can smell the sun to lotion, but I can't stand the smell of that. I can't stand the smell of that. Very nice, very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, so, <laughs> as we kind of uh, wind down here, tell me you're uh, still recording new music now for another album. Album. Yeah. Um, well, actually, um, all the songs have been recorded now, so um, oh. it's just a case of um, you know waiting for the release date. So I've got a single coming out on the February the ninth called "Remember the Highs," and. Then after that, I've got another single coming out. So it's a kind of like a double release. Um, that's called Over the Draft. Mm -hmm. um, and then the album will be out shortly after that. Uh, by spring, you think, or summer? What do we think? Uh, I'd say probably May, April. Okay. All right. And yeah. Can people find you? Are you out playing at this point uh, in the UK or elsewhere? Yeah, yeah, I've done a load of gigs. Um, 
So, like, for example, this weekend, um, or next weekend, sorry, I've got uh, three nights in a row, Birmingham and then Stratford-upon-Avon and then Coventry. That's all next weekend. <laughs> and then I've got Oxford the following week and Leamington Spa. Um, and I've got Plymouth coming soon as well. So, yeah, there's lots of gigging to be to be done. So, yeah, lots of work to be done out there. <laughs> all right. So, uh, folks, listen, you can find uh, Lucy Chaffee's uh, uh, EP, Little La Pan, it's uh, available with uh, great online music retailers, for example. You can order it right now at a great price at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching this on the website, on our website, either over there or over there, to your left or to your right, uh, underneath uh, Lucy's video, you'll see a copy of the album cover. You can click on it, and uh, Amazon can deliver to you via download or physically very quickly, so you can order that. How can people get the singles? Are those available on iTunes, or where are they? Yeah, um, iTunes and Bandcamp as well. Yeah, Spotify. All the usual places. All the usual places. Very good. Uh, you have a website. You want to give that out? Yeah, sure. www.littlelapanmusic.com All right. And are you on Twitter or Facebook? Facebook. Yeah, Twitter, one little lapan. And Facebook is facebook.com forward slash little lapan. Very good. And Lapan for my American brothers and sisters is L A P I N. Go to school. <laughs> well, uh, Lucy, uh, delightful to meet you. Delightful to meet you. Really enjoy the music. I'm so, really so glad you were able to join us today. And, you know, have a great and wonderful career and come back and see us again maybe after the new album is out. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Buzz Burbank in the Buzz Burbank Newsroom, preparing for you another Buzz Burbank News and Comment. Do you like good stories? Boy, I sure do. I turn over a lot of stones each day to make sure I don't miss the best ones. Sure, some make me angry, and some make me sad, and some make me laugh, and isn't that what makes us human? I'm proud of the fact that I pack more news into my 10 or 15 minutes a day than the evening news does in a half hour. It's a free podcast at buzzburbank.com, or you can subscribe free at iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or get it on any RSS device. It's like a newspaper for your head. It's Buzz Burbank News and Comment, another Realm Network presentation. Weekday mornings right here on the Realm Network. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the George and Tony Entertainment Show. Prepare for awesome mediocrity. We're the Cousin Oliver of the Realm Network. I'm George. And I'm Tony. And we're a weekly family-friendly podcast about pop culture. From our point of view. At RealmNetwork.com. The George and Tony Entertainment Show. From the Realm Network. This is Snake. Do you read me, Otacon? Loud and clear, Snake. Did you listen to the latest episode of the Gaming Marathon on the Realm Network? Of course. They really know their stuff about gaming, especially that Asid guy. Yeah, but that Chirac guy is a real jerk. I don't like him. Regardless, the reviews are spot on and they tell it like it is. That's for sure. 
Uh, what happened, Snake? Were you spotted? Nah, it's just Lowell Melser crying about the O's again. Uh, whew, close call. I better continue the search for Metal Gear, but keep listening to the gaming marathon each week. You got it, Snake. New every Monday afternoon right here on the Realm Network. It's the Mark and Lowell Show. Hi, this is Mark. And this is Lowell. And if you're fans of Don and Mike, you may know who we are. Our number one interns. You, you've met them on the show. They're the guys that ate all the junk, and they were outside with each other holding hands with a sign that said that they loved each other wearing the dunce caps. And what you may not know is that we started out as fans back in their WABA days. Hi, Don and Mike. It's Mark and Lowell. Oh, yeah. Hey, these are, these are two guys that uh, we once actually called them our protégés, didn't we? And now we have our own show so we want you to give it a shot and just check us out at the realm network realmnetwork.com or you can go to mark and lowell.com every tuesday and thursday evenings right here on the realm network and catch the poor premium show friday nights